The long walls are about 6 kilometers of rock which connected Athens to a port in the mid 5th century BC. They denied access to Athens by land and allowed access by Athens to the sea where she could trade. The Greeks at the time fielded hot plate armies, spearmen, not siege engines. These walls essentially made Athens untakeable by a land force. Despite this substantial advantage, Athens' main rival, Sparta, argued against their construction. In 457 BC, a last ditch Spartan attempt to prevent the project by military means failed. The Athenian army they crushed en route had delayed them just long enough for the walls to be built, just hours after the battle. Without siege engines, the Spartan army went home. Pericles, who ran Athens in the years after, decided to expand the long wall system, adding another wall from Athens to the other main port, Phalerum. The land caught in between these two walls and the sea were to be used for agriculture. How much land is that much land though? I decided to use linear algebra, also Google Maps for the kilometre distance in between, which became the coordinate points. Don't worry if you're not familiar with determinants, all I've done is make a 4x4 four four matrix with each coordinate to its counterclockwise neighbour. If that 4x4 four four doesn't have its leading coefficients along the main diagonal, you need to swap rows until it does. Each row swap changes the design of the determinant, then you sum the sum of diagonal products which essentially gives a big parallelogram. Taking half of that parallelogram will give us the area of our triangle. So Pericles had about 24 kilometers trapped between his walls and the sea, which he decided to use for agriculture, to lessen the difficulty of a siege if it happened. The world event at the time was the Persian invasion of Greece. It united over 150 city-states. At first, this was an equal partnership, but by 454 BC, after the group's finances got moved to Athens, it becomes fair to call this group the Athenian Empire. And it's interesting how that happened. What seemed fair at first gradually deepened the inequality. If you couldn't send ships to the League, you paid for the upkeep of, she of ships. Athens supplied the ships and ended up with a massive amount of boats and a lot of money. They used their new power effectively and defeated the Persians. However, Athens maintains the league, the tributes and the fleet even after the Persian threat is gone. Once home, Athens still has Sparta to deal with. This is part is the human element, because of course Athens doesn't have Sparta to deal with, they're not an existential threat like the Persians were. They are both covered under a peace treaty from the last time they connected, but Athens and Sparta are like fire and ice, they don't get along. So Athens starts poking Sparta's allies. In 433 BC, the Megaran decree prevents any of the member states allied with Athens from trading with Megara, a minor Spartan ally. They were alleged to have wrecked by Athens some Athenian sacred spot. In 432 BC, the Corinthians asked Sparta to call a council, and they let the Spartans know, unless they act against Athens on the behalf of their allies, they won't have any allies left. The Athenians actually turn up to this conference uninvited. They let the Spartans know that A, they defeated the Persians, and B, their truce demands the enter negotiation before any military action. I guess this is like couple counselling for Greek cities. The Spartans vote on it and decide to go to war. They basically didn't enjoy watching Athens' recent rise to power. And although they had lost no ba battles, Sparta had been relegated to a backwater nonetheless. Athens refused to back down over their economic sanctions and there was a following massive land invasion by Sparta. Pericles, in response, brings in everybody from the country. This is like 200 to 300,000 people. That's, in perspective, that's like half of modern day Athens. These people are stuck behind the long walls as Spartans burn the fields just outside, hoping they'll come out to fight. This isn't a modern city though. These people 
have diverted streams and rainwater for sewage systems, which were close in proximity to the sources for drinking water. It's an odd one, but most of those people would have been slaves. A quarter of a million people locked into siege conditions, and most of them weren't free. This is ironic because Athens was the birthplace of democracy, and Pericles the leader of a radical democratic party. But his city was full of slaves. Anyway, in response, Pericles sends a fleet to raid the coast of Sparta and her allies. This pattern continues for years, a land attack followed by a naval counter. Even today, avoiding overextension while refusing appeasement is known as a Periclean strategy. It combines defence and offence. In 430 BC, a plague swept over the city of Athens. I wrote something in R to describe the effects this might have. These uh, differential equations describe the heart of that program. Don't worry if you don't know calculus, the ds over at is the change in the amount of the susceptible population over time. We want those changes to be proportional to the existing numbers of healthy versus sick. The more sick people, the more people you become sick. Beta will be the infection rate. Put our total population as the denominator because we don't want the overall population to change. It's basic, but it'll highlight the epidemiology of this. This R model uses the epi model package. The squares and circles are different races representing the country folk influx from the always inhabiting urban dwellers. The size shows age and the nodes will form edges preferentially in similar groups. I wanted to read this description of the plague by a contemporary who survived it. The plague ended Athens' chances of winning the war, and this underlines that. As described by Thucydides in the second book, an aggravation of the existing calamity was the influx from the country into the city, and this was especially felt by the new arrivals. As there were no houses to receive them, they had to be lodged at the hot season of the year in stifling cabins, where the mortality raged without restraint. The bodies of dying men lay one upon another and half-dead creatures reeled about the streets and gathered around the fountains in their longing for water. Pericles himself perishes in 429 BC. The male citizens of the city don't vote for surrender. The city suffers plague after plague, defeat after defeat, until finally surrendering to Sparta in 404 BC, 25 years later at which point they tear down the long walls which had shaped so much of Athenian military and political policy. Thanks for watching. And if you have any ideas for future videos, please let me know in the comments.